I'm Chris Gardner of the Houston Round Ball Review, and joining me is Ron Cottrell, and I like saying this, the HBU James Sears Bryant head men's <laughs> basketball coach. How, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for taking time to, to sure. talk to me. Um, I like asking all the coaches that I speak to, uh, what, what did the team do this summer to work on to prepare for this coming season? Well, obviously, our our summer took a, a dramatic turn on uh, June twentieth that, that was not expected, and certainly, probably as unfortunate a situation as you possibly could have with the loss of Darius Lee. Um, and so that really, uh, I guess, formulated or, or transformed uh, where we were headed as a team over the summer. Um, Certainly, it galvanized the groups, the, the the group of guys that were here last year, um, with with hopefully they're going to come back and and be really motivated to play well uh, this year to, in in memory of, of Darius. But but our, once we got back to campus uh, from that, we all went to New York for the for the funeral services, uh, and the guys came in and started working out. Uh, we really have. have I think really had a good on the court uh, period this summer and, and leading into the fall. And, uh, you know, we've had to kind of, I guess, transform, change how we're going to play with the loss of someone like that. Uh, some guys are going to have to grow up a little quicker than we might have otherwise had them plan to do. Uh, but I think overall it was a good summer as far as our guys um you know, stepping up to, to an unusual situation, a life-changing situation for for our team, uh, and certainly a very, very unfortunate and something that we we had no hopes or, or thoughts that we would be going through. And this is September, so not much time has passed since that tragedy. Right. Are you getting a sense? How, how, are, the, how are the players doing? You know, some of his teammates, how are they doing yeah. now? Yeah, I, I think they're doing well. You know, everybody deals with loss in a different way. And some guys just get really, really quiet. Some guys want to talk about great memories. Some guys just want to stay away from it. Some guys are, or you know, you name it. You, you go through a lot of different things. We, we spend a lot of time with our guys going through some counseling um, with them as a group. And, and some guys have gone in and done some individual counseling as well. Uh, in college bas basketball, as, as you know, nowadays, there's so much uh, transferring and movement of players uh, that your team from year to year changes dramatically. Uh, and so even when we start going through counseling, half the team had not been here last year. And so they didn't play with Darius. They may have heard of him, knew of him, mm -hmm. but they weren't close friends. Uh, but I thought it was important for them to go through the experience of going through counseling because we all have to deal with 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 the death and, and, and loss of someone like that differently. And I wanted them to be prepared to talk to guys who were going through some really tough times in dealing with their friend. And, and you know, we spent probably a month and a half, almost two months, where we really didn't even talk about basketball that much. Uh, and where we were going as a team, and this year we were just working on, on healing guys and right. making sure they're okay. And 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 you know I've done a lot of stuff with with Darius's family back in New York, and 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 a, a close contact with them, and that's been really good to kind of help them heal and let them know what he meant to us and our program. Um, and so it's been a yeah, it's only September, and that happened in June. It, it, some some ways it's, it's flown by. Some ways it's it seems like a long time ago. Um, and so it's uh, you know I hope no coach ever has to go through something like this. This is something that's that's uh, it, it changes your perspective on on coaching um, and and what's important and, and and what really you you want to talk to your team about. Um, and so I don't know if that answers your question, but that's just kind of some thoughts of things that we've been going through. It, it answered my question. You know, I asked you about how the players are doing. How are you and the coaches staff doing? I think you we're know, doing OK. It, it's it. You know, again, it, we've gone through loss before. You know, Coach Key lost his uh, 
right. his daughter in an accident. You know, it's been what 11, 12 years ago now. Um, and so we we went through that all together as a staff, and and uh, and so that was that, that was a life changing and difficult situation within our family. Um, and so certainly we've we've been down this road. You know, for our players, many times they don't. You know, they've dealt with loss maybe of a grandparent or something like that, um, but they haven't dealt with loss of a peer. And mm-hmm. and we as coaches, you know, because we're a little bit older, um, we've gone through some of that. And, and so it's not as, as shocking to us. Um, you know, we, we now know that we're not invincible, uh, whereas players still think they're invincible. Uh, they're so young, they think they can go and do, and, and nothing's going to change, uh, about their, their life situation. But, but we, as coaches deal, deal with it and look at it, I guess, a little differently than, than, uh, than younger, younger players do. And you're talking about Darius Lee and the tragedy going to jump into the, I guess, the middle of non-conference schedule because mm-hmm. there will be a, a Darius Lee Memorial Classic game mm-hmm. against the Rice Owls. How, and as part of a, a three-game event, right? how did that specific <laughs> idea come about between you and Rice head coach Scott Perra? Well, believe it or not, it was, it was Scott's idea. He, he called me about a week after Darius passed something like that and said, Hey, I got an idea. I want to do something to honor him. And we'd already been working on this, this classic. Um, and so we started playing around with different ideas of things we could do to honor Darius, uh, within the framework of the, of the classic itself with the three games and kind of talking back and forth, Scott and I came up with this idea of doing our game as, as the Darius Lee Memorial classic, within the the owl invitational this was this was a partnership deal that we that we kind of entered into with them uh and don't get me wrong rice played a huge part in getting this thing put together um i was just happy to be able to get some some games some be able to host some games out of it uh but then when the whole thing came about with darius and 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 scott approached me about i'm like first of all i'm just honored that you would even think of it Uh, i think it's tremendous to have that coaching community, you know, have, have think, you know, think that much of one of your players. I mean, Darius was a special young man and anyone who played against him knew that he was a terrific player, but he's also a terrific guy and, and, and someone that I think everybody respected simply because he, he just played basketball. He, he didn't get into all the, all the other theatrics that go on around the game. A lot of times these days with, with the, the me, me, me syndrome that guys get into it's you know Darius is all about winning ball games and 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 doing whatever he could to, to help our program and you know, I think that spoke volumes that he came back you know he could have easily left after this year and 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 said I want to go look at other options and he was very loyal to, to us and and didn't want to go look at other options and so I, I think all those things kind of says who Darius is and why Scott even approached me about playing a game in his honor. Um, I think it's going to be tremendous. I know I've already been talking with Darius's mom. They're planning on coming down uh, from New York to be here for that. And I think that's going to be a tremendous time to be able to to talk about Darius's life and what he meant to HBU and, and our players and our program. Has there been any discussion so far to make that an annual game? We haven't talked about it past Right now, um, obviously, this game is at Rice. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I could foresee. I'm not committing, and I don't know for sure what we might do, but I could foresee us as as HBU community uh, continuing that on with a game each year that would be designated uh, as the Darius Lee game. Uh, we haven't really gotten that far yet. <laughs> We're just still dealing with the immediacy of everything right now uh, and trying to get ready for a season. Uh, but certainly that's something that's going to be discussed. Let's get into the season. How many newcomers on this this year's team? Oh, uh, give you numbers. That's a good, good question. I think there's seven, you guys, uh, seven or eight. There, it's a good group. We brought in a, a mixture of, of transfer portal guys, JUCO guys, and high school guys uh, with a prep guy in there as well. And so um, – You've got a really good group of guys who are returning. 
that I think are, are the core of, of who we are and, and, and got really great experience last year. Um, but the new guys, we feel like we brought in guys who can help us at every position. We brought in guys at, at every, every slot across the board on our roster. We brought in guys that we think can come in and be immediate contributors for us. Do you have a sense of who will be or who is the vocal leader for this year's team? You know, we actually, that's, that's a good question. We started kind of talking about that as a, as a team, as coaches, uh, what will this team look like from a leadership point of view without Darius being there? Um, and, and while Darius wasn't really vocal, he was a pretty quiet guy. Uh, he very much had his thumb on what was going on. He knew the pulse of our team and, and uh, knew who to talk to and how to talk to them and things like that. Uh, and so we've been trying to kind of figure out who's going to take that role uh, because our point guard situation is going to be new players. Uh, the, the guys who are going to – that we're looking at to be our point guards are all new to our program. And so you don't know how they're going to fit in because typically your point guard, that's who you look to just like a quarterback mm-hmm. on the football team. You know, who's the guy with the ball in his hands, who's going to be the guy who's going to step up and, and lead from a vocal point of view. Uh, for our team. And right now, um, I think the guys who are going to play point for us in, in some form or fashion, understand we're, we're going to have a mixture of guys. We play multiple positions. Uh, but Pierce Basil, who's a, the prep guy that we brought in from uh, Phoenix, he's from Lincoln, Nebraska, but he went to prep in Phoenix, uh, has, has started to become a really vocal leader for us, even as a young player. Uh, Drew King, uh, who's who's from out that direction as well is is a freshman, but he's going to come in and he's going to be a pretty vocal leader for us. Uh, Mox Klonchak, uh, who's transferred from Maine, uh, is going to play some point, some two, three. Uh, it has that experience. He's he's been at the Division One level. Uh, I expect him to be a pretty vocal leader. But then you've got Bryson, who's a returner. Uh, Bryson Long and, and Sam Hoffman, who are returners who played a lot of minutes for us last year and are vocal leader type guys. So it, it's going to be a lot of different guys, but obviously you go into the season thinking point guards are going to be the guys who are going to step up. And even though ours are going to be young, I think they're going to be leader type guys on our team. Let's talk about some of the non-conference matchups. Um, I think the Southland went to 20 games for conference games this year, right? 18. 18? Yep. Does that, I think the first game opened up against um, at Florida International. What was your thought process in putting together this non-conference schedule this year? Well, you, you try to balance home and road. You try to balance, you know, power five, big programs to try to give your program some exposure, things like that, um, with some some what you hope to be very comparable competition games. Uh, mixed in there as well, and so that every year it's it's kind of putting pu- you know the pieces of the puzzle together to put together a, a schedule. We've got 16 home games. That's the most home games we've had in a long, long time, mm-hmm. uh, which is really good for our program. Um, but we start out at Florida International and go to Texas, you know, three days later. So that's a early road swing where we play a a good team on the road in Miami. Uh, that we feel like is going to – this was actually scheduled as COVID was hitting, mm-hmm. and it got postponed because of COVID and things like that. So we're just now playing it. It's a home-and-home. Home. They'll come to our place next year. Um, really excited about that being our opener. Uh, I, I think that's a, a good gauge for us really early as to how we, we, we handle a road game against an opponent like that. Uh, last year, you know, we played at Texas to open, and that was overwhelming to some of our guys uh, to play in Chris Beard's first game at Texas. Um, and the crowd was crazy, and it, it was a great environment. Uh, and I think it really opened our guys' eyes. I, I feel like going to, to Miami before we play Texas this year is going to be good for our, our guys. Uh, and then we turn around and play Chris's team, who's going to be, you know, as good as they were last year, they're going to be even better this year. And then you play, you play champion Christian, mm-hmm. and then you participate in the Olive Invitational. Yep. 
And so just thoughts about the Isle Invitational overall, who you guys are playing there. Excited about getting Western Michigan and Georgia Southern to come to our place. I mean, getting games like that on, on your home court uh, where they're not home and homes, you got to return the games. Those are, those are really special for a program like us uh, to be able to get those kind of games. Um, good competition. Uh, great for our fans to be able to come see us play in Sharp against really good Division One uh, opponents. And so that's big for us. And then obviously you play a, a crosstown rival in Rice on Monday uh, to end that. And, and that's exciting. We've had great games with Rice throughout the years. Uh, they've won some. We've won some. Um, it, it's, it's really fun. And, and I have a lot of respect for Scott and, and what he's been able to do there. And so I think that's going to be fun as well. And I think you have two matchups against uh, Rio Grande Valley. Is that right? Yeah, we're playing them home and home. Uh, we've got a good stretch here. Where we, 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 we go to Missouri right after the out invitational. And then we've got uh, then we've got a home game against Denver. We've got a Southwest Adventist coming here. We've got a main Fort Kent game here. And then we play a home and home with uh, UTRGV. Uh, we had not planned when we started this to make it back-to-back games for us, but – with it, with finals being right around there, it, it, we're going to go from one week to the next uh, without a, an opponent in between them, uh, and so that's uh, you know I think it's great and place you know, an in-state home and home non-conference opponents. I think that's really good for us and for them. Easy travel and and hopefully it's be something we can continue. And you, you touched on it, sixteen home games. Was that the plan? Was that a goal <laughs> for this coming for this schedule? Yeah, absolutely. I, I want to do everything I could to put us in sharp gym uh, as much as I could and and give us a chance to get some home court uh, advantage, get our crowd going, get get our crowd to be able to see some really good opponents come into sharp. Um, you know, not as quite as many power five type teams on, on the schedule this year. I thought it was, it was really important for our guys to experience some success, hopefully. Uh, in sharp before we got into conference play. So that was definitely a goal of mine is get as many home games as we could. And what is your overall assessment of the Southern Conference this coming season? You know, it's going to be really evenly matched. Uh, the, the, every program lost some some really important players to their program, except for Corpus Christi. I think they've got pretty much everybody coming back. Uh, everybody else has got some holes to fill. Uh, and so that's going to be interesting to see, you know, what they were able to bring in and recruiting, how they're developing their young guys. Uh, getting Lamar back into the league is really good. Uh, Incarnate Word staying and not leaving the conference as initially planned is, is terrific for us. Uh, and then you've got a commerce team coming in that's in transition uh, that really puts us, I think, in a really good spot as a league. Uh, geographically, it's a great travel league. Um, but it's really, I mean, you're talking about competitive basketball. It, it, there is no clear cut. Oh, there's, there, there's these two or three programs who are head and shoulders above everybody else in the league. It's going to be year to year. And, and I think going in, you know, Corpus having won the tournament and going to the NCAA tournament last year and having everybody back probably has the edge right now, but I think everybody's going to be, uh, really, really competitive going into the year. And I think, Next, the 2023 conference tournament is taking place where? It's yeah, it's going to be at McNeese, which is a uh, you know that's going to be interesting. They, they they've now got uh, I think baseball, softball, men's and women's basketball for the next four years, and so that's great for their program, no doubt. They they can play uh, the conference tournament on their home court and get a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. Uh, that's a terrific recruiting advantage. Uh, for them to be able to to, to sell that to recruits. Uh, but it's a terrific facility. Obviously, Lake Charles is a great place to travel to. Hopefully, it's going to be great for the league to have uh, fans come from all over and, and spend the weekend in, in Lake Charles and, and, and experience a terrific facility and, and really competitive basketball. How long have you been a college coach? Well, I'm starting my 32nd year here. Uh, I was four years with Coach Richardson before that. A uh, year in junior college, so whatever that math is, 36, 37 years. What, how have you changed in all that, all those years as a coach? Well, uh, I've got grayer, I've lost some hair, and <laughs> and, and, and probably, I, I think, probably mellowed a little bit, but uh, 
you know, I don't know that I've changed a whole lot. We, we our style of play is still fairly similar. Uh, I think I'd, I'd like to think one of my strengths is is developing relationships with players and and getting the best out of them because we, we're all on the same page, working together uh, for the same goals. Um, I think to me that's what coaching is all about is is helping guys to be successful and and if they're successful we're successful and 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 it's you know it's just fun for me to see guys grow and and um, you know see how you know now that I've been in as long as I have see guys come back and they're married and have kids and successful lives and and all that and I think you you mature as a coach and you, you see the bigger picture and certainly the summer helped us all see the bigger picture as well um it's much much more about relationships for me uh with players and former players and coaches and and people on our campus things like that uh and trying to put everybody in positions where where they can be successful and in turn we as an institution can be successful is the relationships you built and seeing your players grow, is that part of what still motivates you and inspires you to coach? Yeah, I, I love that part of it. Uh, it. It's kind of funny. I think, you know, we all go through, we have jobs and there's things about your job every day that that you like and you don't like necessarily. And, and, and you fight through the things you don't like and, and you really try to hopefully focus on the things you really enjoy doing. And I'll tell you, when I get off the court every day for practice, that was my the most fun part of my day is, is getting out of the court and and coaching basketball and, and and interacting with the guys and you know I spend a lot of time in the weight room with them just you know talking to them and and building relationships and and to me that's what coaching's all about that's that's what motivates me is is hopefully they keep me a little young and 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 fun having fun doing what I'm doing and I can somewhere along the way maybe give them a little uh, uh you know voice of my opinion from experience and and uh, it's just fun seeing guys grow up and, and and mature and get a college education and be successful in the basketball uh realm of things and also in their life coach what what do you say to recruits sell your programs uh mm-hmm. right now to me what do you say to get me if i was a if i was a parent of a young man thinking about going to college why hbu why houston baptist university well, the first thing is you're going to get a great education. Uh, th- th- there is there is no better education that you can get, in, in, in my opinion, in the state of Texas than what you're going to be able to get here. Uh, I think, you know, there, th- we could go into, you name it, different fields uh, of, of study, and we're going to offer it. We're going to give you a great experience in, in small classrooms on a, on a campus that that I think is a beautiful campus. People love coming here and, and seeing our campus and, and being a part of this community. Uh, to me, that's at the end of the day, it's about getting guys college degrees and, and setting them up for success in life. Second, it's a Christian campus. And I think we offer an opportunity to guys to come and be in an environment where people are gonna love on you and, and re- gonna care about you and, and gonna help you grow, not just in basketball and not just in education, but in life and, and being on a Christian campus gives us the the ability to be able to really help guys and pour into guys and see them grow uh, spiritually as much as anything. And I think that's important for us as an institution to never change and never lose that that identity of, of who we are. And and whether a guy is necessarily a Christian or not when they come here, I believe it's part of our job is to to uh, exemplify who we are as a Christian institution and and uh, see where that seed leads them. And and so that's a big part of who we are. And then we're in Houston. I mean, what better place to live? You know, city of Houston is a terrific place to live. And and so you you look at our roster and you see guys from all over the country, literally, and in some some situations all over the world, come to be a part of not just HBU, but the city of Houston and everything that Houston has to offer. Those are all great things. You know, yeah, we'd love to have uh, better facilities and, and 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 new places to play basketball and all that. But when it gets down to the very end, it's it's about the things you can't touch. It's about the education and the relationships and the people that 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 are a part of your life, your teammates and and all those kinds of things that are really much more important than the physical and 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 necessarily what you know how how great your facility is to show during recruiting. Because I tell you what, it's still ninety four feet and, and and fifty wide and ten feet high rims and it's still competitive basketball and played at a really high level 
And, uh, and so our guys get here and they enjoy the experience they have at HBU. And I think that's, that's what sells our program is our, our players, our institution, the experience you have here and, and the education you get here. Thank you very much, Ron Cottrell. I'm glad we finally got a chance to talk and get this yeah. done. But Coach Cottrell, who I've known for a long, long time. <laughs> um, but yep. Yes, but I'm going to conclude it with how I opened it. The HBU James Sears Bryant head men's basketball coach. Thank you, Coach. You take care. And I will see you this season at Sharp Gym. Sounds great. Thank you, Chris. Take care. All right, you too.